Hey yeah, guys, thanks for stopping by. This weekend's video is going to be a rundown of some solar panels that the guys took away with us camping last week. We're going to have a look at three different sets of solar panels. We're going to have a look at Adam's King's 120 watt folding solar panel that he got from 4-Wheel Drive Supercenter. Steve's older generic Ruthie approved 120 watt solar panel and uh, I think you'll be interested in the price difference uh, between these. Keep in mind those ones are a little bit older and we're also going to have a quick sticky beak at Steve's 250 watt U-Butte kick-ass solar panels this isn't going to be a particularly technical video as i go camping with different people and i see gear that i'm interested in uh, and i think that you guys might be interested in as viewers i'm going to get them just to whip it out <laughs> and just give us a look at it and we'll go over the stuff again not going to be too technical just giving you a look showing you what different sort of solar panels are out there show you how the guys are using them uh, i know when i'm looking at purchasing new gear i love to get on youtube and just have a look at it and just physically see it being used and just see what it actually looks like rather than just the pictures on the website for the various solar panels i'll put links down to the appropriate websites etc down the bottom just to make it a little bit easier for you to find if you're interested in that okay so for you guys who follow the channel i'll get around in front of the camera we did a quick look at glenn's 200 watt solar panel blanket folding panel kit that he got from ebay again we'll put the link for the video up in the left right hand corner whatever the case may be adam has gone and picked up how many watts adam 120 120 watt solar panel, folding panel, solar blanket, whatever you want to call it, from Kings, from super cheap uh, four, four drive sup, four wheel drive super center. There we go. Look, every man his dog in Australia knows four wheel drive super center. We all know the Kings brand. The one thing I don't like about the Kings brand is they slap the Kings brand on bloody everything. Um, it doesn't matter what it is, like it's big and it's bold and it's out there like dog's nuts. You can't blame them. Nah, they're, they're branding their stuff, mate. And then, and that's how you know everybody's got King stuff is because everything's got the King's brand on it. Like, I think every, probably three out of four four-wheel drives in Australia have got the King's awnings sitting on the side of them. I got the instructions. Even kept the instructions. Okay. Because it was the first time I've used them. So, so 120 watt mono. The output on it was that already in Anderson. Yes. All these extra, all these fittings are all on them. They come with a okay. comes and with a comes with a five and with a lead. Five meter lead. Five meter lead. Now, what were you saying about the lead itself? Were you happy with the quality, the sizing of the lead, or not? I was a bit concerned about the size of the wire. That turns up. I'm going. You know, what, that's good size gauge wire. I'm happy with that. <laughs> Hang on, I'm going to bring the camera in for this. That's your red wire. So there's a lot of insulation in that, less wire. The thing is, is that the output of the panel is, you know, is only going to be a maximum of about, I think it's about seven or eight amps. Yep, yep. So really for the wire that's there, it's that's perfect. Yep, yep. If you went up to the next size panel for the 200 watt, yep. uh, it, could, it could be you know, a bit funny with it. So, so it probably looks like, I don't know, what, 15 gauge, uh, uh, sorry, 15 amp? Yeah, it'll probably be between 10 like and that. 15. Yep. Okay. The, the max current <laughs> that it has per the specs yep. is 7.35. 7.35. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so that's the maximum with it. So okay. that's why, you know, I, really, the wire for the, what it is is sufficient. Perfect. Yep. Okay. It, it's perfect for it. They've done the right thing. Big Anderson plugs. Everybody uses yep. them. So they have the 50 amperes on it out yep. of the box. Anderson on both ends. Yep. I think come with Anderson. So come with the the long lead panel and a controller. Yep. How Industry much? Seated. It's 150, I think, from the store. Thank I went and bought that with. I bought a 10 meter lead as well. Oh, okay. Yep. And the 10 meter lead is normally like 30 odd dollars, and I got that for only 15. Because you bought it with? Put it because I bought this? it with it. Okay, well, all right. So I've got yeah. an extra long lead. Was that one of their package? Yeah, okay, all right. So one of their package deal things. I got the longer lead because it just gives me a little bit more flexibility where where I put the yes put this up if I want to put it up somewhere else. I see where we are here. There's lots and lots of trees, so it's not ideal for solar. There's lots and lots of shade. You will see. I did get almost the pick of the place over there with the caravan and my solar. But Adam has just shifted his whole camp to chase the sun. So obviously portable and having, what, 15 odd metres worth of wire yeah. is bloody handy. That's the five metre on at the moment. Yep. And that's plenty to go from the front of the car yep. to the back of the car with yep. a little bit of slack, I suppose. Yeah. Well, for me, because I have my second battery in my box at the back. Yep. yep. I don't have any Anderson plug or anything there. I'm doing a direct hookup. The charge controller that come with... Yep. The panels, all right. Do you know what, what is that like a 10 amp rated? Yeah, uh, yes. Yep, okay. 
because one of my mates, I don't know whether you saw the solar panels I did the review on the other week, he got the 200 watt off eBay, yeah. and yeah, it, and he had the 10 amp, huh? which is probably the same unit that you got there, it looks bloody identical, yeah. but it, because his panels were putting out more than the 10 amps, it was cutting out, yeah, and it would restart. Because the, panel, because the panels themselves were only that maximum. Yep, that maximum 10's amount. plenty, yeah. yeah. So just to confirm, package, solar panel, the blanket itself, yep. that lead, and the charge controller. Yeah, and then there's a, and then there's the lead that hooks straight onto your batteries as well. Right. So, one. but th is that that one that you're using there? Yeah, it's the one there. But what I've done is I've put extra Anderson plugs okay. in between. Oh. So it had, they all had comes with 50 amp Andersons. It had the Anderson on. on the the pigtail yep. effectively. Yeah, so two pigtails. Wow. Okay. Have this, uh, they've got 50 amps on it. Wow, okay, Ready and so that was already fitted in, probably stuck in the controller already. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yep, so everything was fitted, you just pull it out of the bag and hook it in. Somebody who knows nothing about solar, this is a bloody good option. Hmm. Like, it's already fitted, it's already connected. Yeah, you don't have to, to plug into your solar yeah. controller and do whatever you need to do. But the only thing I did notice is when I was hooking it all up, I hooked up the panel. Yes. I expected the controller to come up straight away. Not until you connected it to your battery? Exactly. Yeah. I haven't used controllers before, yep. any, I've never used solar panels before in this way. So a trick for young players, if you hook it up to your solar panels and your controller doesn't come on, don't worry about it, not until it doesn't come on until you connect up to your battery. Only because I've seen somebody else mention that before. Yeah. Exactly, <laughs> and see I have, I've not, I was sitting there and I've, I've gone, yeah, oh, it's it on, and then yeah. it's like, hook up the last bit and it comes on, and right, ah, here we go. With mine, because I want other options for this solar panel, Yes. Um, I put these other 15 amp uh, Andersons onto it, uh, mainly because I do my portable radio stuff, which yes. you've already seen before. Yep, up in the um, corner we'll put a link to Adam doing his uh, radio stuff yep. where we went so, out for a paddle. Yeah, I, I put that on there mainly so I can either hook it up to the battery yes. there or I can hook it up to my other batteries that I do have yep. um, okay. there, which have got straight up Anderson plugs on them. Yep. So the panel itself is supplying 14.8. It'll be interesting to see with just sitting it here for a little bit to see how it goes. Coming out this weekend, yep. there's more of a test. So it'll be interesting to see what your voltage gets up to once you lose the sun because you're asking of it not just charging duties, you're asking run me fridge as well. Yeah. So, okay, that's a good test. And something you would reasonably ask of the solar panel when you're yeah. away camping. And I went for the 120 mainly because of the size because it fits right on that windscreen. I wanted something that a little bit smaller. The weight of it, I reckon it'd be at least, I reckon probably five, I reckon five kilo, yeah, five to six kilo. That sounds reasonable. But it's a nothing weight in that. It's not heavy enough to bother anybody carrying it. That's the bag it comes in. That's the size it So that's the size to. of the bag. Yep. So it's nice and small. Um, it's not that thick either. The bag's not that thick. So the thickness of the bag, you know, you can see it's, and it fits in there comfortably yep. with cables and controller. Realistically, that's probably the cheapest thing in the whole package. The oh bag, yeah, the I bag's suppose. cheap, but yep. you can see the sizing. That's the size when it's all folded up, yep. packed away, it fits all in there. That's, controller and cable. That's under your seat. Oh, you size? Could fit, you could fit it under your seat, no problem at all, because of the ute. Yes. Because of my back seats, I can fold oh, them okay. down. Yep. Um, I suppose some of the newer utes, they actually, the seats yeah. come up. Mate's got so whether or seat. not they would fit underneath but, the seat, yeah. I don't know. The only other way would be to grab me multimeter. Yes, do you have one? I have yes, one in I the do. car. All nerds have a multimeter in the car. Uh, Stephen, just point in case. Do you have a multimeter in the car? Huh? Do you have a multimeter in the car? Of course. Yeah, see, there you go. Thanks mate, just proving a point. You're happy with your Kings thus far? Thus far, it looks like it's working all right. <laughs> we'll, 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 uh, we'll see how it goes over the rest of the weekend. So while we're looking at solar panels, Steve, VK2UD, aka Mud Dick, has um, <laughs> put a link to his channel up in the corner, does four wheel drive touring Harsh. trips and that sort of stuff. And uh, you'll get to see me on the channel as well. But uh, there's lots of good sort of four wheel driving and touring type stuff. So if you're interested in doing a bit of traveling or something like that, um, go and check out his channel. And he's also got some collaborations with a bunch of other YouTubers uh, from the Newcastle Central Coast type area. So go and have a look. And he also did the, the drift stuff uh, weekend the other week, which was a good video. Might encourage you to get there to the next one, like it's going to do me. Anyway, Steve's got his solar panels out. The sun's gone down. <laughs> he's got his, old, got his old crap solar panels out over here. And then he's got his, uh, his sort of... Kick-ass ones. His whiz-bangs over there. So we're going to have a look at these. We're going to tack this onto the end of the video with Adam. So you've had a look at his Kings 120 watts. And this is going to give you a bit of a comparison of the different solar panels, I suppose, that are options are available to you. 
these ones, Steve will let us know I suppose, but probably aren't available anymore. These are old school. Obviously your kick-ass ones are going to be available. You send the ones of Glenn's we did the other week for his 200 waters that he got for about 160 odd, odd bucks. Again, links down in the description for everything that we put here, whether it's available on eBay or whether it's going to be at Forward Drive Supercenter. Whatever the case may be, enough talking. Let's have a look at these panels. All right, Stephen. Right on. What do you got? Not a great deal to talk about. They're folding. They're supposed to be 120 watt. I okay. Don't know where they are. All right. Uh, never. Just not tested. No, I've never bothered to put a meter on them. I've, I get about four or five amps out of them. They just fold literally round in a circle. These are Ruthie ones. Anybody who's been a forward drive. Yeah. Shit. Okay. All right. Ruthie panels. Ruthie proven, eh? Back in the day, mm -hmm. when panels were dear. Yes. These were dear. All right. Yeah. 120 watts, what'd you pay? 120 watts, back in the day I bought these, these were around about $600. Holy Frightening, isn't it? Shit. Compared to what you can buy okay. these days. So 600 bucks, 120 watts. We just looked at Adam's 120 watters and he paid about 150 bucks from Supercenter and that was with the cable and all that sort of stuff. So, That's how solar technology is. Oh, it's changed, isn't it? Yeah. Look, if you're not into solar now, you're doing something wrong. Now's the time, get into it's it. It's so cheap. Yeah, they, they did come with the regulator Yes. Already there, it's just tucked in here. Yep. You can unplug it, so you can use them unregulated if you want to on an MPPT. Yep, okay. So, and I think industry standard, just 50 amp Anderson plugs. Yep. They came with, uh, I think it's about a five meter lead, Anderson plug, straightforward, nothing to it. Pretty well like every panel known to me in these days, Anderson yeah. plugs. And yep. Very similar to my 40 ampers from Aldi. And realistically, yeah. probably most of these come from the same shop. Probably. The ones I, I often lay on the windscreen. Yep. They have they have got a set of silver legs that you can put on the back. Oh, do they? Okay. Like yep. There's all your leg tabs with legs. Obviously, I've got these upside down today. Yes. But they're not a really good set of legs. They stick out like a single stick. Okay. So there's three of them, and they just poke into the ground. They're not really exciting. So I've little, got a couple of stools. Your wanderer seats, which are your favourite stool, yeah. favourite stools. I use them for everything. Bloody handy. But as yes. it happens, they hold the solar panels up. And they keep the accessory battery in the 200 powered up quite well. I run a CFX 50 fridge, LED lighting, usual stuff that everybody four wheel drive runs in the back and they will put enough power in it that I can pretty well run indefinitely just with them. Now you don't have a fixed solar panel on the roof of the 200, no, do you? No, no not at all. I, mean, I drive it enough where I don't think it's really necessary. Yep. Okay. Point to make is... Even if you've bought solar panels from before and they may not be the most efficient or whatever, you can always use them to supplement your new stuff. Providing your voltages are matches and stuff like that, you haven't got a big mismatch, like you're not using house panels with 12 volt panels or something like that. You can always just make yourself a wire adapter, plug all your panels in. So you never really have to throw them out and they don't really become redundant. You can always use them for something else. If you've got a battery in your shed or something yeah. that you want to keep topped up, you could leave that hooked up in your shed. But not like camper. I have actually supplemented my main panels with these on occasions. I've yes. got a second Anderson plug. Yep. The main Anderson plug goes through the MPPT charge of it's built into the trailer. Mm -hmm. The second Anderson plug goes straight to the battery. So I, because they're regulated themselves, I've plugged these into the second Anderson plug and yep. get the power from these ones as well as my main panels going through the other one. Let them so, do thing. Yep. So that gives me, you know, about 300 odd watts of power, which is plenty. People do often talk about that, about whether you can put two lots of panels in with the different controllers. You can, probably worth you doing your test because sometimes the, the, the controllers might compete against each other. One might see the voltage input of the other one and think that the battery is full charged, whatever the case may be. But a lot of people have had success with it. So if you've just got another input or you've got the alligator clamps and you've already got your battery connected up to another controller, you can certainly plug these on, see what happens. Um, you're not really gonna break anything. It's worth a test. There, there are lots of different options there. Go and do your reading, make sure you taking information from a, a proper source, somebody that's actually done it, rather than just somebody that's read that somebody that somebody that somebody knew somebody that did it and it works. So Mind test it out for yourself. Exactly. Just yeah. bottom line, test it out for yourself, find out what happens. But get out of be sun. So we're over here and you'll see that we're not standing face on to Stephen's panels there because they are actually getting sun. These are Stephen's whiz bang kick ass 250 watt solar panel, Stephen? Yep, 250. I've never seen 250 out of them. Yep, oh, I don't think you ever do out of I've your panels seen there. 220. Yep. Wow, okay. Which I thought was That's outstanding. pretty bloody good. Yep, be happy They're with that. Dirty as. I tried to clean them, they just get dirty again. I'll give up. Five panels, they filed up pretty well the same as the other ones. I am charging with them at the moment, so I won't fold them. You'll see here Steve's solar panels, and he's got his lead running all the way. Over there, 
20 metres of lead altogether, guys. <laughs> you got 20 metres of lead uh, over to the, the camper there. He's got his fridge, 95 litre Waco, something like that, CFX. Uh, that's the CFX 90, yeah. These are Steve's kick ass 250 watt solar panels. Uh, Left or right, wherever it is, up in the corner. Right hand side, says Stephen. Uh, you'll find the link to Steve's channel again, where he's got a review of these solar panels. So if you want to go and have a look at that, go and check out Steve's channel. Won't be as comprehensive as Brett's. So they fold the same as the other ones. They literally just fold over in a big circle, which I won't do because I was instead of using them. What they do come with is they came with five meters of lead. I asked for another five, so I got the, uh, but I wound up for some reason with two tens. Okay, so you got a bargain there? Yeah, I did actually, and when I rang them up and said, hey, I think you've sent me an extra one, they said, good luck to you, mate, enjoy. Not so, many places would do that, a lot of them would say, company. send it back. Yep. They're, uh, I think they're SunTech panels, and it's all put, put together in Australia. What they do have, though, is they have a really good leg system. A lot of them have got this, and it's just a stick. This has got a full stainless steel sprung leg. It's got a strap for adjusting it. I've never adjusted it. But that actually allows it to stay pretty solid. Yeah. You can thump them, winds will blow them, they don't move. And peg them down, they've got tabs to peg them. Yeah, I like that. That's bloody brilliant. Again, we were looking at Glenn's solar panels the other week. Link up top there somewhere. But this stuff, like for me, when I see tabs like this, or those legs with the ability to peg down, that tells me that the people that made them actually use solar panels. Yep, they do. Do you know what I mean? Like where those ones we looked at Glenn's the other day, they were great, 160 bucks. I'd be happy with a set, realistically, but they didn't have the ability to peg them down in the wind. The The legs weren't that great. It, it just, it doesn't look like whoever's made them has ever physically gone out and tested them and used them. Otherwise, they would have added these little things that just make life that much simpler and make them that much more usable and practical. Going from, we just had a look at Adam's over there and we looked at Glenn's solar panels the other week. The material and the quality of these is I wouldn't even say one step above, I'd say two steps above. But you're paying for it. You um, do pay for it, guys. <laughs> hang on. I want to get Steve in shot so he can tell you how much he paid for these. Steven, these how much did you pay for your 250 watt kick ass? Granted, you got these two couple years, years ago, a yeah, couple of yeah. years ago. So Before solar went mad. Prices have changed. We've spoken about that earlier. How much did you pay for your 250 watt solar panels? These were around about 1200 to 1250. They were not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be sitting down too, mate, I'll tell you. Sorry. Hang on. So how much, Stephen? Uh, did you miss it? You're going deaf. <laughs> 1200 or 1250 thereabouts they were. A lot of coin. That's Australian dollars. 1200 1250 yeah. Australian dollars for 250 watts of solar panels. So that's, what, a fifth, fifth of a watt per dollar. Uh, uh, and Adam's about a dollar or watt-ish, or about a dollar or watt, I think, was what we saw on... Uh, or actually, less than a dollar a watt for the ones we looked at the other week. And yeah, I expect to still have these in 20 years and expect they'll still be working. Yeah, I think you would want it for 1250 bucks, I but so. realistically, you probably will. Now, whether Glenn will have his eBay specials, more than three, four, five years, maybe, folding and unfolding, is yet to be seen. And if, if something happens, we'll report back. But he's already had these for a couple of years. And other than being a bit dirty, because we've been camping in dust and crap like that, you wouldn't, probably wouldn't know that these aren't new. They're actually a prick of a thing to clean. Weight wise, do you know? They are quite light. I think they only go around about eight kilos or something. Yep. Okay. The well, bag that... for them too is really world class, but they, they fit into a nice big bag. Then they just slot in, plenty of room, room for your cables, the, and the, the actual grab handle, wherever it is, it's on one of the ends of the panels, is actually what goes through the bag. So you're not actually holding the weight of the panels by a canvas bag, you're holding it by the panel, which is a good idea. Not too much to be told about them, they just work. I've got to tell you a little bit about Stephen, just so you can understand the panels. He's one of those guys that goes out and buys the best of everything, right? I try. So, there is a reason. So, he, uh, don't get me wrong, he's bought some crap in his, in his time. He likes the ASU radios. Realistically, he's the bloke that you look at when you go and win Lotto and go, what Stephen got? Now that I've got the money, I'm going to buy the same gear. And that's the problem, if I ever win Lotto, I'm, I'm going to end up 200 with, whole, series. with probably 200 series are going to look the same as his because he's got all the best gear on it. He spends top dollar, but he gets the good gear. Right, keep going, buddy. 
the eBay spotlights. <laughs> yeah, he does. All right, we won't talk about his spotlights. The the good Icom antennas. He's got the Rhino roof rack. You know, all of this sort of stuff. GME radios in the car. Kmar. Kmar rear bar. Kmar rear bar. ARB gear. Kick out solar panels. So this is the sort of quality we're talking about when you're looking at these solar panels. Thinking about the quality of your four-wheel drive gear. That's the level of gear that Stephen likes to put on his Land Cruiser. So that's how you probably should be thinking about these solar panels when you compare it to like your eBay or something like that. Would that be a fair statement, Stephen? Yeah, I think so. The guts, the guts of it too, guys, is funny, the longer you've been doing it, the more you're likely to buy the better gear. It costs a bit more, but usually you find you buy an expensive one, you buy it once, you buy five cheapies. It winds up costing you more in the long run. With that said, nothing wrong with a lot of the cheaper Chinese stuff. The King stuff's really good. I've got a King swag. It's a fantastic thing. Some of the King stuff is questionable, but most of it's pretty good. Realistically, if you're a new guy getting into four-wheel driving, you haven't got a big budget. Go and buy yourself the cheaper gear, get out there and go four-wheel driving and camping. That's what you're doing it for. Later on, as you've developed, you can buy better stuff, find out what works for you. I found out over the years, a lot of my cheaper gear has been a waste of time, so I've started spending more money on better quality things that I believe will work better. So I buy the products I buy. Well, at this point, these are proven. Yep, two years um, of hard abuse, and they get used every time I go camping. And they've been around the country. Yeah. <laughs> so. so I think you can see there, these are our King's supplied wire. These are our kick-ass supplied wire. So... With genuine kick-ass Anderson box. Well, there you go. Hmm. So I think this is 6 BMS, something like that, which I think is some 120 amps, something yeah. like that, might somewhere between 80 and 120 amps, something like that. Um, it goes on their website. Yeah, we're looking at this and we're um, talking maybe probably 15, 10, 15 amp. Probably 15 would be realistic. But. Basically, Australian company overkill to make sure you don't get anything failing. Yep. So keep in mind, your voltage drop over something like this would be minimal compared to something like this. That being said, it works. This is what nerds do. So you can have a look at the back of this end of the plug. You can see the gauge of the wire coming out of there. We come over to the standard one. Just you can see the gauge of the wire that's coming out there. Mm -hmm. Always go overkill with your wiring. You if you're going to afford it. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, absolutely. You're always better off. You upgrade, whatever. There we go. At the end of the day, Stephen. Probably goes without question now. Are you happy with your 250 watt kick out? I'm panels? happy with them. Yeah. I cringe when I bought them, like you would. Yeah. But uh, we're stung. Yeah. What, well, I bought them for two reasons. One, I wanted a slightly bigger panel to run the camper trailer because the size of the fridge and the lighting depends on it. 250 watts is plenty. Yeah. 250 does it. I tried running my camper off my 120s, you've seen earlier, wasn't enough. That simple. So I went the bigger ones. The other reason is, they fold up small and portable. They're a lot smaller than my old 160 watt glass aluminium panels were. Mm -hmm. And they're a third of the weight. When you've got 200 series, they, they're fat, they get heavy very quickly. You keep as much weight out of them as you can. Which is why Steve had to lose his 80 kilos. Because uh, he was packing the car full of this sort of stuff. Uh, so that's it. That's uh, the end of the, I guess, the solar panel review for this weekend. If you've got any questions about these panels specifically, probably head over to Steve's channel. Again, link up in the description, uh, link up in the corner somewhere down in the description. You'll see it at the end. Uh, it'll pop up with a link to Steve's channel. Uh, so possibly pop over and ask him directly. Yeah, or if you comment below, I watch Brett's stuff. So I'll answer any questions. There you go. So you can put a comment down below if you've got any questions. Alternatively, uh, Adam uh, pops on as well. So if you've got any questions for Adam, uh, just stick something down the below about his King's ones. Keep in mind, we're just some clowns that have bought the stuff. So if you've got any questions, throw them down below. Uh, we'll do our best to answer. Catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys. <laughs> <laughs>